this evening she is going to enlighten us with her knowledge and experience on sustainable development through environmentally efficient management systems ladies and gentlemen please help me welcome dr may matthew kerala engineers forum chairman engineer mimbu jos secretary engineer sajith george and all other committee members and uh, all kf members and also the uh, eminent personalities from kerala who has come to present paper like ph kurian sir and pc sirek sir very good evening to you all of you and my today's heading is nine stitches to save many policies and projects for kerala and greater kochi because as an academician after going through the sustainability of literature and about comparing and analyzing the things in kerala what i feel is nine stitches a stitch in time could not be done and so that at least nine stitches are done now many many stitches can be saved for tomorrow and the presentation is uh, that is uh, as for the following order uh, what uh, this is uh, e and cc this two strong sustainability indicators and e and cc of kerala state and e and cc based decision support system for great kochi study area which i have prepared in my phd thesis and uh, the concepts and policies contributing to e and cc enhancement in kerala and ways and means of achieving e and cc and project formulation based on e and cc kochi hajji valley project of great kochi development authority e e and cc e this has been uh, this paper has been uh, accepted by global submit led in 2012 it is available the paper is available in global submit site 2012 this has been accepted by them and e stands for environment and efficiency and cc stands for carrying capacity and before coming to what is e and cc i want to introduce three strong terms of sustainability literature by united nations one is bio capacity and ecological footprint of wwf and human development of undp bio capacity of earth is nothing but the productive capacity as well as assimilative capacity of earth and it is expressed in global hectares and ecological footprint is what the an average man is uh, that is what all produces he requires for his livelihood and also the what all how much of area is required for assimilate the waste generated that is also expressed in global hectares and one global hectare is a hectare with the world average productivity that means in the case of kerala when i am going to explain about kerala in the in the case of kerala there may be land but since the productivity is less when it is converted to global hectares it is becoming less and also human development index of undp main factors are health education and income and in my terms as a town planner what i feel is it is more than health it is wellness more than education it is skills achievement and more than income it is profitability and now the earth is ecologically overshooting because it is 30 percentage in excess of its capacity the ecological footprint based on when, when compared to the bio capacity of earth and now existing scenario in such a way that the efp is 30 percent is more than the bio capacity as per the united nations statistics and the and also the when the that is um, efp ecological footprint is more than bio capacity excess emissions are going to the atmosphere as cfc as well as um, that is global warming agents like like that uh, carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide equivalent and and when there is uh, ecological footprint is less than bio capacity there will not be emissions because everything will be neutralized by the earth and now in the things are happening in such a way that because of the spare capacity and planned development fossil fuel wastage transmission losses etc very less things are reaching to human development other things are going to the atmosphere and the ideal scenario is such a way that we, what we have to achieve is ideal that is the ecological footprint should be contained within the bio capacity and what all ecological footprint we are consuming it should be directed towards human development there are ways and means of achieving human development that is uh, the things are written, written there and i'll be explaining in later slides 
And I have made two indicators, namely environmental efficiency, that is it is based on output by input approach, that is HD by EFP, human development index divided by ecological footprint. And in this, social economic fact, society and environmental factors are cons considered in HD, while environmental society and the economical factors are considered in HD, while the environmental factors are considered in EFP. And uh, this is uh, biocapacities, stock divided by consumption, BC by EFP, and these are the two strong sustainability indicators. It, it, and uh, this, it has been, this contribution has been made by me in my, through my PhD thesis, which is available in the Cochin University's website as well as the Global Submit site, as well as it's IEC 2011 also, I presented this. And this are, um, this I'm explaining that because this can be quantified in terms of numbers because HDEFP as well as BC values are there in the UN site, WWF and HD, uh, that is WWF and um, UNDP and we can, we can make some kind of international environmental management based on this because low HD countries are there with the high CC while high HD countries are with the low CC. So some kind of biocapacity trading in lieu of human development can, it is a possible solution which I have replied, replied, um, that is indicated in my global submit paper. And uh, now when I thought about, because based on my sustainability passion only I have developed this, now I have found that it has got a huge application from the individual level to global level. At the family level, community level, metropolitan area level, like that, it is a very strong indicator. And now coming to Kerala, Kerala is a God's own country. There are immense strength and opportunities. It's scenic beauty, abundant rain, wind, sun, waves, and biodiversity, forests, rivers, backwaters, and wetland, moderate climate, fertile land, human capital, accessibility. All these are very immense strength and opportunities and very weaknesses are very meager, which can be managed very easily if, if there is a will. And present scenario in Kerala, there is a kind of exodus is taking place because we can see that the animals are coming from forest to suburbs in search of food because we can see in newspapers. And agriculture is moving to forest land because for Adivasi people, government is planning to give agriculture land, taking forest land. And urban areas sprawling to suburbs and people are going to other productive urban areas outside the state, in, that is in places like Bombay, New Delhi and all, and also to the Gulf countries and uh, other European countries and American countries. And research is underperforming it because none of the systems, irrespective of whether it is forest or it is agriculture or urban, none of the systems are performing, they are all underperforming, that is what I have seen. And now ENCC of Kerala in terms of e, that can be classified like that is in the human development, what Srik Sar was telling that the human development base Kerala is very strong, but now it has come to a halt because of so many reasons. And the ecological footprint is spiraling and biocapacity is also diminishing and E and C C values are diminishing. And why it is halting human development now? Per capita debt is very high in Kerala compared to all other South Indian states. Lifestyle diseases are there. Road accidents are one of the highest accident rates. And crimes and suicides are there. Other diseases are there like, like leptospirosis and uh, the, this, thing, this thing, chicken gunia and things like that. And the ecological footprint is also the, because of the personalized vehicles and urban sprawl activities, ecological footprint is becoming more and also the transmission losses are there, lack of opportunities so that people are going abroad, so that there is double establishment, houses are remaining locked in, in Kerala and they are living outside. That also increases the ecological footprint. Biocapacity is reducing and uh, what I found that, uh, that is Millennium Ecosystem Assessment has made this report that because of the disturbance to the ecosystems only the productivity loss is happening and in Kerala because of the uh, scattered settlement pattern that was originally there. Now, government is also encouraging this kind of development and also the, the regulations are also like that. The things are sprawling, that is urban areas are sprawling. That is That might be the reason why the Kerala has got a peculiar type of settlement that is characteristics. 
that is the urban areas are um, uh, that is still so far till 1990 and urban areas are going that's our, as per the census urban areas are going proportional to urban population and now the tendency in 2011 census 47.7 percentage of the people are urban just because of the urban land increase urban land is increasing disproportionate to urban population that means there will be more revenue expenditure and less revenue deficit establishment charges are more receipts are less now these are the few slides which i have done in my phd thesis that is uh, the study area i part i have taken based on a geographical information system i have classified the, the, this uh, i have taken this area which is north of hedapalli that is a part of cochin corporation and four municipalities and uh, uh, on the both sides of the highways nh47 and nc road i have taken a buffer zone based uh, using the geographical information system and this the built up area i have taken from the irs list three map and uh, that um, uh, i have made this to a grid 1 km by 1 km and i have taken factors like that is some of the proxy indicators like uh, land utility accessibility per capita built up ecosystem disturbance fact the four factors i have taken if how i have derived this thing i require at least 15 to 20 minutes so i don't I'm, i don't want to discuss it that is describe it in detail but one thing is that when land utility increases hd hd increases because individual ownership to common ownership land should be made in because the facilities will can be um uh, used by many people which, which inculcates um, human development accessibility has got in both ways it increases uh, uh, hd because of the nearness it reduces efb because of the saving in fossil fuel and also per capita built up in that is it, um, if it is um, uh, horizontal development it increases efb it is coming on the denominator and ecosystem disturbance that means we should if we are disturbing little bit neither ag agriculture will be there nor urban development will be there if you are the concept is that if you are disturbing disturb it fully or don't touch it and this is the e map prepared for the 2002 for the greater kochi study area and from this ce map i have derived certain 100 cities 200 cities and 300 cities maps in which that 300 cities star is the grids which are which are to be these are the least disturbed grids so that it can be reserved for agriculture and in kerala now the nowadays paddy and wetland act is a very huge problem and uh, uh, now this is a solution because certain areas paddy reclamation should be allowed and while in other areas paddy reclamation should be conserved and uh, people have a feeling that only paddy field is required for our human existence it is not like that we need dry land as well as wetland so a kind of ecosystem disturbance uh, ecosystem conservation approach should be adopted in this green areas and while in 100 cities grids the, those are the grids which are already disturbed there is no agriculture there there is no ag urban development there here and there some kind of urban sprawl has taken place so, so that for the further development these places should be given priority and the uh, and cc implementation can be done because already there is one something known as nuis program of you in in in, in tie up with the un there is in under the central government and in kerala also it is suis state urban information system and it is it is not performing well nothing nothing they are doing and they can act, take up these kind of activities combat cities contribute to um, hd by efp because it, it increases human development it reduces ecological footprint and also green building movements also encourages human development reduces ecological footprint and policies evolve from e and cc land, land utility of the city should be improved by encouraging common land uh, land ownership that means uh, that is uh, government land is having more land utility than a private land because more number of people are owned by it so that the facilities are taken by more people which inculcates human development individual house uh, house versus apartment it's also like that and uh, accessibility has got square function because 
it, it increases human development, reduces ecological footprint, so that accessibility is, has got a very high role for the sustainable development of cities and places and metropolitan regions. Walking and cycling should be encouraged and provision of MRTS, mass rapid transport system should be encouraged, it should be given top agenda. And uh, high rise development should be encouraged and uh, to discourage development in places which are ecologically sensitive and the least disturbed areas should be conserved. ENCC monitoring and enhancement should be done and uh, TDR should be done in a scientific way. TDR is nothing but the reserved land, development rights are given to spare capacity areas and planned compactity centers so that uh, this land can be made free. And this is the Kochi Hijavari project which I have proposed, that which I have moved to the GCDA, GCDA budget, it is included. And now it is included in the Vision 2030 document also. And based on medical tourism, this we are planning to develop 100 hectares of land in the Tripuntra Chautani Kera border based on the principle of environmental efficiency and carrying capacity. The location is like this. Next. And each achievement we are making by making it a compact city and with, uh, with facilities at a walkable distance where there, there is an economic development and accessibility is increased by widening of Peta Pudigao road to 27 meter and only green building or greater rated building will be permitted there. And uh, this is a low lying area and where the, which were 70% like of them are paddy field and this area we will not allow the water to go out we will be collecting the water for in, out of the 100 hectares, 15 hectares of land is reserved for this kind of rainwater harvesting pool and this excess water will be uh, given to the underground where there is a permeable zone using our, uh, that's artificial recharge structure and when there is a shortage we will take it out. Uh, smart grid is also proposed there. And CC achievement, and I will tell you how we are going to do it because uh, the default affair of that area is 2 and we have given a 0.75 FAR for uh, road TDR because we have to increase the accessibility of the project site. So 0.75 road TDR and 0.75 agriculture TDR and uh, the agriculture TDR means the people who are buying the because this is a site and service scheme the real estate people who buy this land they can buy the remote agricultural land, they can surrender it to GCDA so that we will be giving uh, the transport development right. Development rights will be transferred to the project site and because of the locational advantage, they will be getting huge profits because if I invest 10 lakhs rupees in, uh, that is in suburb like uh, Todupuda or Malayatu and if you are compared, uh, suppose I am uh, doing it in Marine Drive, that locational advantage is in land values. It will be there and it, it is very attractive. And this agricultural land, we will be pulling it out. We will be taking it out and we will not use it none other than agriculture and we will not do agriculture also. We will be giving to the leasing it to the local panchayats or voluntary agencies to do agriculture. Like this only we can curtail the urban sprawl activity in Greater Cochin area. And conclusion is ENCC is very effective method and it increases the output and the profitability. I mean the profitability attracts, when there is profitability only, economic investments will be attracted. HDBY EFP ratio is more only, uh, there will be profitability. When the profitability, it attracts economic investments. And when there is economic investments, it increases the job opportunity. And when there is job opportunity, there is no, no need to Kerala going outside Kerala or outside India to do work they can get uh, the, that suitable jobs in their homeland because Kerala is such a nice place and if there is a will, there is a way to do this. Government has to support our activities and our ideas. GCDA Development Authority should be strengthened and we should be given enough powers to do things like that because PH Kurian sir is here who is a close associate of Uman Chandi sir so that <laughs> <laughs> So we are, ex we are keeping our fingers crossed for the sake of Kerala and the people who are NRS and NRKs who are what's working outside, I'd say outside Kerala and the, who wants to settle down in Kerala. Thank you so much for your patient listening. Thank you. We are having the post session.